Hello, listeners, and welcome to Anyone Can Move. This is your host, Caroline Gerhardt. I have been really excited to talk to our special guest today and talk, talk about the topic that we are going to discuss. Um, for those of you who aren't For our listeners who aren't dancers, today's topic, I think, brings up something that is really important to me and I think to most dancers that other people understand about our field and what we do. And that's that dance is never just a job. It's never just this is what we do and that's that's it. I think most people who have pursued dance for a prolonged period of time, um, there's it has so much to do with passion. It's so much about the fact that it's what's in our hearts and it's what you know we feel like we're called to do we this is something that we can't live without and i think our guest today is such an incredible example of that i'm so excited to have evan ruggiero on the podcast today and he is a professional dancer and a professional tap dancer who has a prosthetic leg and I have just been so excited to talk to him and learn more about his story, and I think his story is going to be just such a great example of the fact that Mm -hmm. dance is something that we continue, no matter what barrier is placed in front of us, Um, and I know we've talked a lot about, you know, that perfectionist type A um, stereotype that comes along with dancers, which really doesn't make it a a stereotype, it's fairly true, Um, that We're so determined to get the job done, and I'm just so excited for Evan to be able to share his story with us today and for us to get to know a little bit more about him. So without further ado, my conversation with Evan Ruggiero. Hello, Anyone Can Move listeners, and I'm so excited to welcome today our special guest to the podcast, Evan Ruggiero. Hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, good. Thank you for having me. Of course. It's so nice to meet you, and I'm so excited to have you on today. I'd love it if you could tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and a little bit about your background in dance. Yeah, absolutely. So I started dancing when I was five years old. Uh, I saw my sister in a dance class, and I just thought, hey, this looks like a lot of fun. Why not give it a shot? Yeah. And uh, I started out with hip hop, and like I was not great at it. It wasn't really my thing. So I told that I wanted to take tap and I got my first pair of tap shoes and I took my first tap class and I absolutely fell in love with it and then I just kept dancing um, all up until I guess I was 10 years old and I told my mom that I want to take my dancing to the next level and I uh, auditioned for a professional tap company and I got in Uh, that was called the New Jersey Tap Ensemble and I had one of my first performances uh, at Lincoln Center uh, in New York and uh, New Jersey Performing Arts Center in Newark and I I got involved in theater and singing and music uh, in middle school and high school and that kind of like really opened up my world uh, more um, uh, in the arts and just you know not only dance but just kind of combining singing acting and dancing Nice. on stage um so i went to school at montclair state university and um i was going to study musical theater so i can get my bfa in musical theater and while i was there i woke up one morning in my sophomore year i had a pain in my right leg and uh, i wound up being diagnosed with osteosarcoma uh, which is bone cancer and i went through a ton of different surgery and, I, and I, you know this it was about seven months of surgery and at, at the time, after those seven months, my cancer was gone. Um, but then abruptly, my cancer came back. And now in order to stay alive, the doctors had to amputate my leg uh, above the knee. So I had that done. Uh, I went through chemo for quite a while. Um, uh, cancer spread to my lungs. And so I had two operations on my lungs to take out uh, different tumors. And um, Eventually, I I just said, you know what, I want to continue tap dancing. I want to be able to do this. Uh, You know, I don't want to give up on my dreams. I want to perform on stage. I want to be on Broadway. And uh, I taught myself how to dance with a peg leg. And and the rest was kind of just history. It was just, you know, it was, uh, it's, uh, it's been quite the journey the last um, 11 years now. Wow, that is so incredible. And such an incredible story, you know, the fact that you were dancing beforehand and like 
you were a healthy person and you were ready to go and to yeah. experience that at such a, you know, developmental stage of your life, I'm sure was so difficult, but you're, it's so inspiring that even through all of that, you were like, yeah, I'm still doing it. Like I am going to continue this and keep going. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, of course. So because that such that was such a huge change for you, I'm sure, and you, I'm sure you had been out of dancing for a while before you decided to dance again. Did your passion or kind of your mental approach towards dance did it change a little bit? Um, to be completely honest, not not really. Um, that was, you know, it was the one thing that was actually keeping me going uh, when I was going through chemo. I I think the the most difficult part of the entire diagnosis and journey um, through cancer was the chemotherapy and dealing with that and the side effects on a daily basis. And I took it upon myself to go back to school um, and just try to have some normalcy in my life. And while I was there, um, I performed in the musical Sweet Charity. I was Herman, the grumpy nightclub owner. And just having that normalcy and my friends around me and, you know, the director of the program just kind of, you know, boosting up my morale and, you know, keeping going, that was, you know, that was getting me through cancer. That was keeping like my, you know, my mental health in check. Oh no, what happened? Are we still there? Oh yeah, I got you. You're good. <laughs> Great. Uh, so that was keeping my mental health in check. Um, and uh, that is, you know, you know, like I said, one of the one things that was actually keeping me going throughout that whole time. Right. And, you know, as a college student in an arts department, I know how challenging that is, like without any additional um, strains put on you, it is such an, a difficult thing to do to, you know, be in a production and be in classes and everything. And so that's also so incredible that you were going through chemo and you still chose to go do that. I'm sure that was a hard feat, but I, I can totally understand how it took your mind off of things and you were able to, you know, put that passion into something that, you know, well, you had all this other stuff going on. So this is what you've done is so incredible. And I can only, I'd love to hear a little bit about how you were able to teach yourself to tap dance with your prosthetic yeah. leg. Well, I, I took a lot of um, inspiration and guidance through Peg Leg Bates, who was a phenomenal one-legged tap dancer way back in the day. He lost his leg in a cotton gin accident when he was 12 years old. And there was some footage of him out on the internet. And I tried to just essentially replicate what he was doing. Um, and then along the way, I met up with a lot of his friends and they shared stories about Peg Leg Bates with me. Um, and then really, I just tried to treat my peg leg as uh, an entirely new instrument. Uh, you know, it was an extension of my body. And I, you know, being a drummer, I said, okay, I'm just going to make deeper sounds. This will be like my bass drum. And then my left foot will be uh, my, uh, my snare drum and my tom toms. And so I just tried to create different rhythms and, you know, syncopated rhythms and, and different melodies and kind of follow along with different songs and create music that way. That's so, it, that's so cool. And the fact that you had somebody to look up to that had gone through that before and got to kind of learn from them, that's so cool that you got to meet some of his friends too. I'm sure that was an incredible experience to get to talk to them and get to know a little bit about him. Um, so the next thing I wanted to ask you about was I'm sure that um, you have gotten to go so many different places, perform a lot. Have you gotten the opportunity to meet and kind of inspire some other dancers that have disabilities similarly to you? Yeah, yeah. Um, it must have been about two years ago. I got connected with uh, a young girl named Avery Bentley. She lives out in Arizona. She also lost her leg to cancer. Um, and her doctor said, you know, you could do whatever you wish. It's so funny. I mean, and the way she tells me the story, she's like, my doctor said I could do anything I want except tap dance. And it's like, wow. Like, that's a, a little, uh, you know. Debbie Downer, uh, kind yeah. of. <laughs> so, so, so she scoured the internet in search of one-legged tap dancers and came across me. And uh, we, uh, there was a foundation that uh, connected us called Wiggle Your Toes that sh uh, she was friends with, uh, you know, uh, with the founder. And um, they said, hey, we would love for you to meet Avery. And, you know, so we'll fly you out to Arizona to surprise her at her dance studio. She thinks that she just has to come in for like 
for, yeah, uh, for this dance orientation because she was going to be a new student at this school. Mm -hmm. So here I am like in the dance studio. She was like, what's happening? What's going on? And then I spent, uh, I spent three days out there just working with her and just, just helping her and just teaching her how to dance. And, you know, just like, you know, going out with the family afterwards, hanging out at the house, you know, just kind of, you know, just, just trying to, trying to be a role model and just show her, you know, what it's like to be an amputee and, and how I navigate my life and how I dance and, and, and just really just trying to help her. So that was, that was like one of the, I guess, I mean, not the first, but like definitely like something that was like really memorable that stands out. And, you know, we still keep in touch to this day, Aww. you know, I'll her mom and dad every once in a while and just say, Hey, how's Avery doing? What's going on? Um, but yeah, yeah she's, a, she's a strong little fighter. That is so incredible. And, you know, I love that she was like searching the internet looking like, I know there's got to be another person like me. Well, out yeah. this well, it's great. Cause when I, like when I, I remember when I first lost my leg, I, I had just got in a car, like not dance related, right? <laughs> so I just got in this car that was stick shift and my doctors were like, oh, well, you have to, you know, give back your car because you can't drive stick shift because you have one leg. I was like, no, nah, nah, I'll, you know, Figure. I'll find, <laughs> and sure enough, I like, I scoured the internet myself and went onto YouTube and found this guy driving stick shift and he was missing both of his legs. And I called him, I was like, hey, like, I see that you're driving, like, I just lost my leg, like, I really want to get into it. And he gave me, like, an over-the-phone lesson on how he does it. Uh, but it's the same thing, you know? The, the internet is is just a wealth of information. And, you know, if, if you have the will to learn something, you can absolu uh, absolutely do it. Right. And that's, you know, that's so important, too. I, we've talked about on the podcast before how, like, dance is not limited to any one, like, body type, gender, right. like, it is so universal, and, you know, the name is anyone can move, like, we really do believe that, like, everyone has movement naturally in their bodies, but you mm -hmm. and this little girl are showing people that, like, really, no matter what, like, it is always possible to not just continue with dance, but just to continue in general and right, really right. Just going like that. That is so incredible. And I love that you still stay in touch with them. I'm sure that means so, so much to her. Oh, I, I hope, I hope it does. <laughs> oh, I do. I'm sure it does. So, so yeah, she's a good kid. Yeah, of course. So what advice would you give to dancers who are experiencing it? Ex words, excuse me. What advice would you give to dancers who are experiencing adversity or considering maybe giving up because we're kind of on that topic? Oh, you just got to keep, you got to keep going down that path. You just got to stay on it, stay on the road. And, um, you know, there, you know, the, the end, whether it be the industry or life or anything, you know, your career is going to go up and down, up and down. It, yeah. it always, and then at some point, like a pandemic comes along and just like totally throws a curveball and everything. Yeah. So, you know, life, life happens and, you know, you, there, there's lots of obstacles that, you know, you're just going to have to get through. But, you know, I, I truly believe that, you know, whatever obstacle comes your way is going to make you a stronger, more dedicated individual, whether it be in this discipline or in another. Right. For sure. That definitely, that's, that's incredible advice. I'd love to know too. So what have, what have you been up to? What's your, been your most favorite performance that you've done recently? What have I been, I, I just came back from Pittsburgh. I was working in Pittsburgh. Um, I was out there working with Pittsburgh CLO. Uh, we were at Heinz Field where the Steelers play and in the Wizard of Oz. And I was the Tin Man. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> And you know it was it was awesome just just to be just to be on stage performing singing dancing and, and acting and wearing that costume it was insane you know just it was super heavy very hot but it was a lot of fun because I got to wear my peg leg and so we modified the costume and my peg leg was coming out and it looked like a tin peg leg and I had a whole tap dance in the show as well um, that just happened I just came back to New Jersey on. Uh, Sunday evening awesome. yeah so that's, I was out there for four weeks mm -hmm. that's such an incredible <laughs> opportunity and especially outside in an outdoor venue like that I'm sure that was a lot of fun it was like 8,000 people it was awesome oh my it, goodness yeah yeah one of the first shows back the, you know first theaters doing something you know so I was like yes I have to do this right 
So we yeah. talked a little bit about quarantine. What, how did you stay active during quarantine? Did you take some time off to rest or yeah. what were you up to? Yeah, well, it was, it, I had kind of a very interesting quarantine pandemic survival job. Um, so I was touring at the time um, and I was up in Maine and uh, we had just finished a sound check and we got put, you know, brought into the house and they said, hey, look, you know, tour is canceled, we'll pay you out. But, you know, this coronavirus is, you know, maybe a big thing and we don't want to be the super spreader event. Like we were selling out these big houses doing like shows for like thousands of people at night. So it was like, we can't do it. So Come back to New Jersey and you know, actually no, I came, I went back to New York and then I, uh, you know, my, I was uh, in my apartment with, you know, my girlfriend and I have, I had this apartment in New York and we kind of said, well, everything was closing and getting shut down. Why don't we just kind of go back to my parents for the weekend? Well, let's just pack a little bit of extra clothes just in case. Right. And then we wound up staying for like months and months and months and, and nothing came back. And so I was trying to find some like weird odd jobs um i was like door dashing at one point uh, like while collecting unemployment you know trying to like make it work working at my uncle's restaurant at one point uh trying to do some like zoom teaching like classes whatnot mm -hmm. and then eventually i just said the heck with it like i gotta pay my bills like nothing's gonna you know that's not stopping like even though my career just stopped i still gotta pay all my rent and everything yeah. utilities um and so i just started working at subaru I was working at Subaru out in Flemington. Um, I'm still there, technically. They gave me two weeks off so that I could go do the Wizard of Oz. Um, but I went back on Monday and that has been my pandemic survival job. And it's just, uh, it's been crazy, like learning an entirely new skill, but at the same time, having that background in acting and like theater and dance and, and just the experience, like the life experiences that I've had and like people that I've got to perform for and, and places that I've been to share with customers to be like no like look like I'm not really a car salesman I'm just like an out-of-work actor right now because of the right pandemic. and it's Subaru you know like they're good people it's a good company it's a really wholesome brand they believe in a lot of things you know marriage equality LGBTQ the whole thing so it's like the customer base is like all about it um and then usually i'll like i'll go on and i'll talk to them about how i lost my life to cancer i was performing i was doing this and doing that and they're like wow and then like you know we, we test drive the car and they're like and we're still talking about like me and performing and then usually they're just like wow well like you're really interesting and like this car's really great like i'll just buy the car yeah i'll just buy it <laughs> i'll just buy the car <laughs> so, so it's been it's been like a fun uh journey um but you know i mean the industry is opening back up there's a couple things happening that i'll be involved in so i just you know we'll see where we'll see where this goes yeah and i you know you bring up such a great point that i don't to any of our listeners who aren't dancers or art in the arts performing arts industry they might not understand that even though things are still like generally opening up like broadway's opening back up and you know i live in orlando like things that theme parks are opening back up people are not hiring like they were like there is still so much it's people are so limited in what they can bring and back I, and you know and there's so many artists who are doing exactly what you're, you're trying to find you know ways to be employed and it's so it's so funny that you bring up retail because i have so many friends actors dancers performers and retail is so natural because you're on all the time and so that yep. just it comes naturally to us yep so yeah so it's i mean so it's been fun i mean i i'm i i do have some things lined up so i'm gonna have to you know part ways at some point but you know I'm looking forward to the future and you know this was this was definitely a great experience you know and learning a whole new skill and knowing that I can do that um and there's that <laughs> exactly for sure so talking about your future what do you have like a big like overall goal that you hope to achieve in your career yeah I mean I, mean, I would love to be on Broadway I'd love to be performing on Broadway. There's a couple of musicals that I'm interested in. Um, and then, I don't know, you know, once, once I get there, I'll, I'll figure out the next thing. Right. So it's always how I've kind of operated. I, you know, kind of checked off boxes here and there, gotten to do some really cool things, you know, had 
opportunities come my way that I didn't even think would be possible. And we're like, oh, cool. Like I cool, perform for a president, check. Perform for another president, check, check. Yeah. You know, like, so I was like, oh, okay. Like didn't ever really think of that. Right. But um, yeah, you know, Broadway has always been one of them. And yeah, once once I get there, I'll hang out for a little bit. I'll see what's going on. <laughs> You know, I'll see if, you know if, if there's another opportunity that comes my way I'll go for it right always looking forward always looking mm -hmm. that's the thing that's the thing very cool for sure and well you just talked about some of the cool things that you've gotten to do out of all of these experiences in your career yeah. you've had what's been your most memorable um well I I guess it's I guess I'm gonna have to go into like a, a quite a bit of a story right now hey we're here for it we love so, the stories <laughs> So I was perform. I I had lined up this opportunity. So in this industry, <laughs> you never know who is connected to who, right. and you never know what opportunities are going to lead to the next opportunity. Mm -hmm. Now, I wound up performing at the time, Vice President Biden. He's now President Biden. Right. At, at the time, I was performing for VP. Biden and his wife and I was like wow like this is so cool like this is amazing like oh wow he's you know you know having this honor yeah. and then from that organization it led me to this next performance opportunity um, with the president of Egypt and I was like whoa like I'm gonna go to Egypt like this is gonna be great so yeah. I get my guitarist. I'm like, Justin, listen, we're going to Egypt. Just don't, you know, like get a passport. He didn't have a passport. I'm like get a passport. Like we're doing this whole gig. Like it's going to be awesome. We're going to spend a week out in Egypt. We're going to be right on the Red Sea across from Saudi Arabia and the South Sign. He's like, oh, wow. Okay, great. So like we get everything ready. We're good to go. We make our connection flight in Turkey. We, you know, then get to um, Sharm el Sheikh in Egypt. Uh, we must have been around like four or five in the morning. And, you know, the two of us are like, wow, like we're in Egypt. Like, yeah. was, like wow, this is so cool. So we're like, okay, like, why don't we just go? Yeah, so we were staying in, in this all-inclusive hotel right on the Red Sea. And across the sea, you could see Saudi Arabia. Right. So we're like, wow, like, why don't we just like stay up until we can catch a sunrise? You know, like the sunrise will come right over this mountain. It'll be awesome. It'll be so worth it. And then we don't have to be at sound check until nine in the morning. Right. So it's great. So like we got some time, you know, six o'clock, maybe we can sleep for a little bit. So, you know, the sun rises. We're like, okay, great. We're like, yeah, you know, let's just get some breakfast while we're up. So we get some breakfast and then, you know, the, the you know, the um, production assistant says, hey, like, like you're going to have a car there in like 10 minutes. I'm like, great. We're waiting for the car. We're waiting for the car. We're waiting for the car. Like car never comes. Car never, like where the heck is the car? Like. So 45 minutes, maybe an hour later, the car finally shows up. It's not our regular driver. And we're like, great, like, I hope we're on time. Right. You know, so we get in the car. We start flying down the highway in the desert. And I'm like, what is going on? Like, I guess there are no speed limits in Egypt. We had to be going at least 100 plus miles per hour. Oh, my gosh. We're flying down the road, and all of a sudden, we see the, we see these two military. So, like in Egypt, you have to go through through uh, uh, military checkpoints every once in a while. There's like security checkpoints every once in a while. You slow down. They just you know make sure everything's good. Then you go. Yeah. After we went through one of the one of the checkpoints, we came up on two military convoys with soldiers hanging off the sides with like massive rifles, just like chilling all you could see is their eyes like behind their masks yeah. and we we're flying up behind them and i'm like oh, jesus like come on and our driver starts beeping his horn he's beeping his horn we're in the left lane there was only two lanes he's beeping his horn we're in the left lane like to, to get these guys like this, the military convoys to move over and what do they do they just move over and we fly past them and i'm like oh, i don't know what's going on right now like and, and had had no sleep at this point we finally show up to the to the conference center and we're greeted by like a general in the military and 
he doesn't let us into the event and i'm like what do you mean like we can't go into the event like you know and he's not speaking english with me and i'm just like ah i don't know what's happening so our driver makes another pass around and i get a hold of uh like like our uh production assist like the contact who we have our stage manager and she comes outside and she's like talking with this general and gives us our passes and he lets us in um so we do our sound check everything is like great like we're happy with it and then you know it's time to get into costumes and everything and like you know you know just get dressed up get ready for the show and i'm just like geez like i haven't slept in forever yeah. i'm i'm just like passed out i'm i'm like ready to take a nap on the couch everyone's running around and i'm just i'm like oh, i gotta sleep and the stage manager is is like not yelling at me at, at my buddy Justin but he's like oh my god is he okay is he okay what's happening oh, no. like what's going on and Justin's like yeah bro, we're just exhausted like we're just tired like we haven't slept tired. at all yeah. you know and now we have to go out and we have to perform for the president of Egypt so like he's just taking a nap like he's just resting don't worry so he so like the stage manager all of a sudden like I wake up the stage manager's in my face and he's yelling yalla 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 which means go 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 oh my gosh. and so we're like oh, okay it's time to go on stage so we get out on stage uh the president of Egypt is there the prime minister of India may have been there too it was like a whole like like you know like like this like big world event I can't remember if he was at that one but we're out there and I'm just like, hey, I'm Evan Ruggiero. Thank you so much for coming today to the World Youth Forum. We're honored to be here. Let's hit it. And then boom, we just kick off this show for like the president and 5,000 people behind him. And then I had to do this post-show interview um, on this panel of like all these people from around the world. And they all spoke Arabic. All right, so that's out there. Now, I had a headset so that I could understand. And the interviewer said, look, just go to channel one, that'll be English. So everything that I say will, you know, get translated. So I'm like, all right, great. And I'm the, fir I'm the first one in this panel. So all Goes, the they're going to you first. Yeah, so I got, you know, so I got the headset on, I'm like, channel one, channel, okay. Nope, nope, that's not English, that's Spanish. Okay, all right, nope, that is French. All right, nope, okay, this is Chinese, this is Japanese. I'm like, where the heck is English? Where the heck is English? And she's talking to me, asking me questions, and I'm panicking. Oh like just gosh. the English, you know, you know, like English translation. And I never found it. And I remember just answering the question. I'm just like, hello. My name is Evan Majiro. I'm very honored to be here today. Thank you for having me. I hope you all enjoyed the performance. Yeah. Uh, I would love to talk about my disability and being in the arts and what it means to me and how we can move forward with inclusion and diversity and just, I grew up being a tap dancer and I lost my, you know, and I just like, just rattled off. Covered all the like, bases. Just, yeah. I just, exactly, I tried to cover as much as I could and I wound up talking for about like, uh, I'd say like 10 minutes straight. And afterwards people were just like, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. Not nah, nah, right. <laughs> so then, so then it went through everyone, and by the well, like by the third person, uh, I was able to have um, uh, uh, an English translation in my headset, and I was like, Phew. so then that way, that like by the next time around, my second question, I was good to go. Oh my goodness. And that I would say is the most memorable gig ever. I can only imagine. Yeah, that that seems like it would be a pretty memorable. That was, yeah, that's just a whole experience. Yeah, you know, all everything that happened, like, and everything happened within like maybe 12, 13 hours. That's insane. Just like, like going to a foreign country in the first place and like not yeah. knowing the language and knowing you're going to perform for the president of that country. Right. And all of those other things happening on right. top of that. Exactly. Exactly. Oh my goodness. And I can't imagine in general being on a panel where I did not speak the language and having to talk to them about something that important and then not yeah. have the correct translation it, in my ear. Yeah, it it wouldn't be the first time for me, but that was like that I was on a panel with, with like uh, 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 with a foreign language, but that that was the most nerve wracking because right. I was like, oh no. <laughs> like, <laughs> translation right what are some of the other countries that you've performed in uh 
Uh, I performed in Italy. I performed in Germany. I performed in London. I performed in Egypt. Where else? Mexico, Canada. I'm missing something. I'm definitely forgetting something. Can't remember it right now. And so I'm guessing out of all those, Egypt was your favorite then. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you can't beat that one. Yeah, that was, yeah. so incredible. Well, Evan, thank you so much for being on today. I so appreciate you being here and talking to us a little bit about your story and everything that you've done. And I'd love it if you could tell our listeners where they can follow your journey, where they can follow you on social media and about any upcoming projects that you could share with us. Yeah, uh, you could follow me at lord pegleg on instagram that's lord underscore pegleg um or on facebook just evan ruggiero r-u-g-g-i-e-r-o um those are the two places where i am the most active and just reach out say hey i respond um and upcoming projects i have um i guess the biggest one that'll be happening would be beauty and the beast and i'll be the beast so <laughs> That's so exciting. <laughs> yeah. So that'll be down in Maryland if uh, anyone wants to come take a ride and go to the only theater. It'd be really cool. That take is so awesome. Well, congratulations on that casting. That's great. Thank and you. Thank you again so much for being on today. We so appreciate it. All right. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Of course. Have a great one. You too. Bye. Bye. Well, that was such a fun episode to record. I hope that you all had as much fun listening to it as I think Evan and I did recording it. I just thought his stories were so entertaining and just hearing, you know, how humble he is about what he has done and um, what he's gone through, I think is just a testament to the person that he is. Um, I also just felt so inspired by his message that, you know, if you have the will to like learn something new, despite any barriers that might be put in your way, just do it. Like, don't let anything stop you. Don't let anything hold you back. And even if you're the first person to do that, or you might think that you're the first person to do it. And it turns out that you have a role model that might not be here with us anymore, but that you can learn about and learn how they accomplished what you're trying to accomplish. I just think that that is so encouraging and um, I'm so excited to see what he does in the future. And I am so excited to keep up with him after having met him doing this episode. Well, as always listeners, keep moving, stay curious and stay confident. Have a great one.